What is up everybody? Reign of Iron here with another game review and today we're going to be talking about Red Dead Redemption 2. Now I am a huge fan of the first Red Dead Redemption game. I played it through many many times and it's by far one of my favorite games of all time. So I had very high expectations going into this game. The question is, does it meet those expectations? That's what we're here to talk about. First off, allow me to apologize because I may fly into an angry rant here, as Angry Joe would say, but I'm just going to throw this out there. I am so sick and tired of people online bludgeoning this game because of the stupidest, the stupidest reasons, calling it a horse riding simulator, saying it's bland and boring, that all it is is a giant world with fetch quests. You fucking people need to go back and play your goddamn Call of Duty and Destiny and leave my fucking Red Dead Redemption 2 alone. This game is a masterpiece. It's beautiful. It is so stunning to look at, and the quests are not just fucking fetch quests. God damn, I cannot stress that enough. That's what pisses me off about reading. That's why I don't read a lot of on the internet. I try to make up my own opinion. Because people don't know what the fuck they're talking about half the time. People are saying that the game is boring. You know what? The first few hours of the game, it, it's a little boring. I'll admit that. Yes, when you're trying to get into the game, you know. But it's... I feel like half those people who are saying these things never got past the first fucking mission. So they don't know what they're fucking talking about. And I see all these zeros and twos and ones all over the damn place. It's like, you're giving this game a fucking zero? <laughs> I'm sorry, but are you fucking kidding me? God damn. They make my job harder. Because now I have to go out and fucking tell you how it really is. And you're still going to have to go out and read their bullshit. So I'm sorry to tell you, but the game is not bad. The game is actually excellent. It's beautiful. It's well crafted. The story is awesome. The side missions each have their own individual sense to them. People who give this game a zero need to leave my Red Dead Redemption alone and go back and play your, your non-story games. Go fucking play your Call of Duty. Go fucking play your Destiny. Leave my story games alone. Yeah. The fuck just happened? So yeah, let's talk about the bad a little bit. There, This game is a little buggy. It's a little glitchy. But with a big open world game like this, that's to be expected. As you can tell from my real-time reaction... I, it caught me off guard when I, when I saw one. Uh, you got weather changing on you instantly sometimes. I've had horses flying through the air. <laughs> Just some really, really funny ones. Nothing game-breaking. I have actually not had this game crash on me. But I have had some hilarious bugs and glitches. <laughs> one... I, I don't have the video clip of it, but I'm just throwing this out there. I actually had a guy who was on his horse flying through the air. And the only reason I knew that he was in the air was because something fell in front of me. And it turns out it was a gun. I look up, and there's a guy on his horse literally supermanning through the sky. It was freaking hilarious. I wish I would have caught that video clip. But that's really the only bad. That and the other downside is the beginning of the game is a little boring. But once the game picks up and the pace starts getting to go, you really get into the game. And the game starts becoming really, really fun. In my opinion, anyway. The, so, really, there's nothing bad about this game, with the exception of a few bugs and glitches that can be rectified with a patch. And the beginning of the game is a little dull and boring, and it's slow to get going. But stick with it, I'm telling you. Stick with it. This game has a phenomenal story, and we're going to get to that. I will also say the controls are a little clunky, and they do literally have an animation for almost everything in the game, which I've, I've noticed people have complained about that as well, saying that it takes too long to do things because there's an animation for everything. I like that. I do. That's attention to detail, another topic we're going to get into. Speaking of attention to detail, one thing that I'm really happy about with this game is the fact that it connects this game to its predecessor, Red Dead Redemption 1. 
And one of the main characters of Red Dead Redemption 1, of course, John Marston, I fell in love with him. The dude is a badass. And this game shows you just how he became that badass. It also goes into detail about Dutch, your gang leader, and how he became the man he is. It shows you different things about these characters that you might not have known. And it really goes into detail about them and shows you how they became the men that they ended up becoming. As well as other characters that reoccur in the first Red Dead Redemption game. The game does it almost flawlessly. So let's talk about the gunplay and the gameplay. And I'll tell you right now, the gunplay on this game is fan-fucking-tastic. They took what made Red Dead Redemption 1 work and made it better, if that was even possible. There are so many guns to choose from in this game, from bolt-action rifles, sniper rifles, shotguns, pistols, sawed-off shotguns, even knives, and you still got your lasso. You know, and everything in this game that you can shoot with is badass. You even get a bow and arrow early on in the game to hunt animals, or you can go purchase a, ver a varmin rifle if you choose to. And the gameplay, yes, I'll admit, it's a little clunky, but at the same time, the animations, in my opinion, are the meat, the juice of this game. There are a lot of animations, and there's literally an animation for everything in this game. You know, from carving down animals just to just simply taking chips off our poker table. But everything in this game is so attention to detail that that's what I like. Many people might not like that, but that to me makes this game a masterpiece. Rockstar knows how to show attention to detail, and I love that about this game. If this game didn't have that much attention, attention to detail, it might not be as good as a game. It really wouldn't. It'd be just your average game. But the fact that they put so much time and effort into each little tiny area from people's faces to the fact that you can blow people's faces off is why this game is magnificent to me. The attention to detail is incredible. From the story missions to the side quests, this game will literally embrace you and make you want more. It will keep giving it to you until you are satisfied. From hunting to pillaging to fishing and robbing, this game is just magnificent. And everything that it does, it is the epitome of what a true western style open world game is meant to be. Rockstar has literally knocked it out of the park with a baseball bat and they have surpassed my expectations when it comes to gameplay. Now, on to the best part of this game in my opinion and that is of course the story. This story is well crafted and it is very unique in a lot of different ways. From the time that you begin this story in the, in the snowy mountains of this world until it ends and you find out the fate of all these different gang members, all these different people's lives that are in your hands, you start to realize as you play this story, as you progress through this game in this world, that there may not be a happy ending at the end of this game. For those of you who've played Red Dead Redemption 1, you know very well that there is not a happy ending for the main character, John Marston. However, I am happy to tell you that uh, despite there possibly not being a happy ending for these people, it makes for an, a compelling story, a really good, good gameplay story. Because you're trying your hardest to see the differences between what they want in this world and what all of these other people want in society. Everything that you go through in this game builds to the climax of it. And that, to me, is what makes a fantastic story. You get introduced to all of these different characters who have different things that they're into, different things that they want to become. And each one of these different characters will ha want you to come with them on certain things. For example, Charles wants you to go hunting with him. Lenny wants you to go fishing with him. 
all these different things add up as you learn about these characters and as you basically become friends with your different gang members only to ultimately have their lives put in your hand at the very end and whether they die or whether they live you either feel that in your in your heartstrings you feel satisfied or you feel heartbroken that this character died and the main character arthur morgan to me is one of the best main protagonists of any game that i have played in a long time because he's relatable he's just a guy just trying to survive in this world and ultimately when it comes down to it that's all he's really trying to do is survive and i really like the story in this game i think the story of this game is really good it's a really good progressive story it gives you some really good twists and turns here and there it really makes you surprised at how well it's told and the attention to detail in the story itself um, makes me want to give this game the highest score possible at 10 out of 10 now we're not there yet but I'll tell you what this game's story definitely for me is a 10 out of 10 it's a really good compelling story and it keeps throwing you some twists and turns like I said you'll be uh, seeing these people's lives unfold right before you and I like that I think that's really good storytelling watching your main character interact with all these different characters and then watching what happens to them this story this story of this game does that really well and it's a pure good story a western story which you don't get many these days and what i love about it the game the most is that there's no microtransactions to muck up the story now of course, online is going to be coming out, and there's more than likely going to be microtransactions in the online. But I'm not going to judge this game off that. I'm judging this game off the story. And the story for me is a solid 10 out of 10. This story couldn't be any better. Now, does it hold up to the original game's story, Red Dead Redemption 1? I think that Red Dead Redemption 1 story still might be a little better. But they're both really good stories. Another really cool thing about this game is that there's vendors everywhere. There's fences that you can sell stolen goods, horses, and other things. There's even a wagon vendor where you can rob somebody's wagon and take it to and sell it them. Usually you get between like 25, 50 bucks depending on what kind of wagon it is. And it's cargo, I think, is what it's based on. But I like the fact that there's so many different vendors in the world and each one does these different things. You've got vendors that you can sell meats and different animal hides to. You got vendors that you can steal sold uh, uh, stolen goods to. You have vendors that you can buy and sell horses. You got vendors that you can, you know, go to and get your hair cut. Go to and uh, buy weapons and, you know, just buy tonics and stuff like that. Go into a general store and buy really whatever you want. Clothes, guns. It's there's so much attention to detail here on everything you do there really is and another really cool thing about this game a really cool feature that rockstar did really really well and <laughs> you're gonna think i'm kissing rockstar's ass here but i love all of the different ways that you can customize your character and make him your own you know if you ever wanted to be Billy the Kid, you could dress your character up like Billy the Kid and walk around like you're a jackass, you know? Or you could be a really cruel person and just look all grimy all the time and kill people whenever you want. You could dress as, you know, a nice looking uh, bank feller that has an honest job. You really can do and dress your character up however you want. And I love that about this game. You know, you can mix and match, or you can go with different uniforms and different suits. It really makes you feel like you can make Arthur Morgan your own. And I appreciate that. I also really like the attention to detail to how you can keep up with your character's hygiene, you know, and also keep up with his hair. You can go clean shaven, or you can be really musky. Or, you, you know, you can even take a bath in this game and make your guy look good. And... 
the they also really give a lot of gun care. A real there's like 36 to 40 guns in this game. I don't remember how many exactly, but I love the fact that you can literally buy all these different types of guns and then even customize them. You can make them look however you want. You can make them your own. That's one of the biggest things I love about this game is you can make Arthur Morgan your own. You can make you can change his clothes, you can change his guns. You can make his guns look really nice, you know. And there's so much attention to detail in the gun customization as well. I loved customizing my guns. Every single gun that I bought, I felt like I did something to it, even if it was just, you know, little. I made a really cool revolver, and I went black and gold, and I thought it looked badass. It's one of the coolest guns that I've ever seen, you know. It's my, it's my pistol. <laughs> I have to make Arthur Morgan's pistol look like a badass pistol, and that's what I did. But the stranger quests and the random event quests and all these different hunting things and fishing things that you can do really add to the game, and I love that you can do so much. And it's all on your own time. You can choose to do it or you can choose not to. I loved helping some of these different side characters you know, in their own endeavors and, and find out what happens to these characters later on. Because some some of them have multiple quests. Some of them lead to new quests. I honestly loved helping these characters. And there was always a few moral choices in these quests as well. So, so the side quests and the main quests, you also have all these different side activities that you can play. Ultimately, I think this game not only meets my expectations but blows my expectations out of the water I don't know exactly what I was expecting going into this game I thought it was gonna be just like Red Dead Redemption 1 but I gotta tell you I think this game overall is a better game than Red Dead Redemption 1 is the story might not be as good as Red Dead Redemption 1 but it definitely hits right there the gunplay and the gameplay is fantastic in this game the attention to detail is beautiful I loved using the cinematic camera I loved pretty much everything that there is in this game and that's why ultimately I think in the end I'm hard-pressed not to give this game a perfect score you know there was so much randomness I had so much fun just running around and playing the game not just doing the missions, not just doing, you know, the side quests, but just playing the game. I had so much fun with. And I don't think I'm the only one. I think there's a lot of people out there who really like this game. And the reason because of it is because it's hard to put down once you start playing it. It's a very long game. And you have to put the work in to play it because it really is the longest story Rockstar has ever made. And combined with all the side stuff and all the activities that there are to do, you're going to be playing this game for a very long time. But you're going to enjoy it every second of it. If you feel like you're getting burnt out because you're playing it too much, play something else for a little while. Come back to it. That's why it took me so long to get this review done. Because I was having so much fun playing it, I didn't want to put it down. But ultimately, I was probably going to wait until... Uh, online came out to actually do this review but I ultimately decided you know I'm kinda late to the race everybody else has seemingly done their review so uh, I decided to just do mine and <laughs> this game is so much fun go out and buy this game seriously go out and buy this game it's on sale right now as, a, as of right now I think the collector's edition and stuff is on sale but if you can find this game for even a lower pr a, a lower price or buy it at $60, whatever you do, you need to go out and buy this game. Add it to your collection because it's a game you will not regret buying. I give this game a perfect score, a 10 out of 10. And that's even without the online features yet. It does everything right that a sequel needs to do. It had a good story. It had better and superior gameplay. It had more to do. It blew me away. And the replayability, as well as the attention to detail, are the game sellers here. 
this game is not only worth your $60, this game is worth whatever you want to pay for it. That's how good of a game this is. Buy the $80 version. Buy the $90 version. Who cares? Buy this game. If you can find it on sale for $50, buy it at $50. Buy it on sale. Buy it not on sale. This game's worth your money no matter what you spend on it. Perfect game. 10 out of 10. In my opinion, 10 out of 10 story. 10 out of 10 gameplay. Buy it. Reign of Iron out. Thanks for watching. And uh, I'll see you later. My next review is going to be Battlefield 5. And we'll see how that game goes. Like and subscribe. I gotta set me down a Not a problem, sir. Not a problem at all. You are in safe hands now. And people waste time with this temperance movement. Liquor never dulled a good man's senses.